What's up you guys, it's Susie from HeyGrillHey.com and today I am making a video requested by you guys. I'm gonna show you how to turn your brisket trimmings into this beautiful snowy white, perfectly rendered beef tallow. Let's do it. been making beef tallow at home for about as long as I've been smoking briskets because the first time I ever trimmed down a brisket and saw this beautiful pile of bright white fat I knew it had to have a better life than just being discarded as waste I mean I paid for the brisket that included the fat right so I wanted to be able to utilize this excess and turn it into something that I could use and cook with in my kitchen and now it's just part of the routine. So here's how you do it. I save my brisket trimmings anytime I'm trimming down a brisket and then I make a big batch of beef tallow all at once. I usually cook down about three to four pounds of fat every time I make tallow. For me that's anywhere between one to two brisket trims just depending on how big the briskets are. But I pop the uh, I pop my trimmings into a bag, press out the air, and put them in the freezer until I'm ready to make tallow. That way, I only have to go through the process once, and then I have some beautifully, you know, ready jars in the fridge whenever I want to use the rendered tallow. So that's what I have today. I think this is probably about four pounds. You can see there are little pieces of meat attached. That's totally fine. Uh, what we're really looking for is these nice, thick, white pieces of fat because these are going to render down really nicely and then anything that is left and crispy just gets discarded at the end so don't worry if there are little pits little bits little little bits of meat in with your fat now we just have to render it down and this can be done a lot of ways and i've tried a lot of them but at the end of the day my favorite one is just putting it in a pot and letting it simmer on low until that fat really renders out it takes several hours uh, but there are a couple options. I've also smoked the fat chunks for several hours before rendering them. I've added rosemary and garlic to the render so that you get kind of an infused tallow. We're gonna keep it simple, we're gonna keep it classic, and we're gonna put these four pounds of brisket fat into a heavy bottom pan. Simply gonna pop this pan over a burner, low heat, leave it uncovered, uh, and this is gonna go, like I said, for three to four hours and you're gonna stir every 30 minutes or so with a wooden spoon, just making sure none of your pieces are stuck to the bottom and all of that uh, fat has equal access to the heat below. I do like to do this outside because there's a smell. It's not mm -hmm. a bad smell. It's not like a gross smell, but it's like a smell. It's, it's a like smell. A, it's a smell. Uh, and so if you don't like smells in your house, maybe this is something you can do outside too. <laughs> That's all. That's it. That's it. You just put you just put the fat in a pan and, and then you put it on the stove. I feel like it took a long time to just See fat that. pan stove. It's really easy. <laughs> Our beef tallow is done rendering. You'll know that it's finished because you'll have more fat than crispy beef pieces left. Uh, it'll be nice and golden brown all the way through. Every single one of these pieces is gonna be browned and crispy. You're not gonna have any remaining pieces of that hard white fat. And that means it's ready for our next step. So I pulled it off the heat and I've let it cool for about the last 10 minutes. We don't want this like, boiling hot but we don't want it cold enough that the fat solidifies so this is warm i would say <laughs> so now we're ready for our first strain i have a colander not a super fine strainer the holes are pretty big and a bowl but this is just meant to catch the big particles we'll do a second strain to catch the tiny ones next Now these guys, you can just discard those. We've done our best <laughs> to keep as much as we could, but these do not taste good. You don't wanna crunch them up and bread things with them. You don't wanna eat them like chicharrones. They're, they're just not great, but that's okay. Here we have some beef tallow. 
And you can see those particles at the bottom. We don't want those to end up in our finished beef tallow. The more pure our final product is, like free from those you know, crunchy pieces and impurities, the longer it will last. So we want to get it as clean as possible. And there are a few ways to do this. Start with a jar and here are some options. This is a really fine, fine, fine mesh strainer. I just bought this online, set that on top into here and then slowly pour your beef tallow through the strainer. Now the strainer is actually newer to me. It feels very fancy. It works really quickly and you can see all of the little impurities in the strainer that it catches and clears away. Is that not darker than it usually is? It, it looks dark, but it when it chills, it's totally white. Crazy. Isn't that crazy? Now, like I said, that strainer is new to me. <laughs> the way that I've done it in the past and a way that's worked for me is with just a regular old kitchen funnel and a paper towel. I've also done this with cheesecloth, uh, but cheesecloth is generally a little bit, like it has more holes in it. So if I do cheesecloth, uh, I, I typically have to strain it through twice because like I said, we don't want any impurities that settle at the bottom of our jar. So if you see any of those while it's still warm, give it a second strain if you're doing the paper towel method or the cheesecloth method. And again, just pour it through your strainer. This one takes a little bit more time and you do have a little bit more loss because the paper towel actually absorbs some of the tallow, but it does work. While I'm waiting for this beef tallow to strain through the paper towel into this jar, uh, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a, some tips on how to use it because it's great to make beef tallow, but then what do you do with it, right? Uh, just need to get it into the fridge, first of all. Well, I guess you could use it right now if you wanted to. But this guy, if you put the lid on it and pop it in your fridge, it'll last you a good three months and you can use it on so many things. My favorite way to use it is to uh, make roasted potatoes, but it is also phenomenal if you render it down and use it to fry French fries. And word on the street is back in the day when McDonald's French fries were like the stuff and everybody loved McDonald's French fries, they were using beef tallow to fry their fries. They don't do that anymore, unfortunately, but you can do it at home and you can deep fry your French fries in beef tallow and it's amazing. Uh, it's also really great for like skillet vegetables, anything you want to cook in a skillet, really. Eggs are delicious. Um, I would just say however you use, if you are using bacon grease or butter, you can swap for beef tallow and have a really delicious, rich umami beef fat to cook with, and it's awesome. I'm gonna let this guy keep going, slowly add some more fat so that it can strain through, but, wasn't that just the easiest thing? I mean, all you really needed was beef fat, especially if you already purchased a brisket, you have that anyway, a pot and a couple of strainers and some jars. And you can really utilize those scraps or garbage that would essentially be discarded otherwise and turn it into something super delicious that you can cook with at home. And if you're asking me, I think that that is next level in terms of being a backyard barbecue hero. <laughs> so I hope you guys step it up, make some beef tallow from your next brisket fat, and uh, snap some photos and post them online. Show me what you're cooking with your beef tallow at home so I can cheer you on and tell you what an amazing backyard barbecue cook you are. We'll catch you guys next time.